the adventures of Koholint Island begin. Join me as I play Link's Awakening, my second Zelda game ever. Thanks for watching and enjoy. And picking up exactly where we left off from last time, the first uh, skeleton dude is defeated here. And uh, oh, our reward is not there. We're going to have to go after it to see what uh, is exactly going on. You, plot twist, you get the hook shot, which is a weapon that, uh, or an item rather, that people really wanted uh, in Breath of the Wild. And I keep comparing it to Breath of the Wild. I'm sorry, it's going to keep happening because it's just that good and that's what I know. So, yeah. Uh, I th So, some people who, by the way, my name is Brian Saviano, a.k.a. Bricks O'Brien. A lot of people were saying that... Um, there's a lot of items that you would miss from uh, an old Legend of Zelda game going into Breath of the Wild. The only one that I think that, you know, was necessary or I wish was in Breath of the Wild that wasn't is the hook shot. But I think they did that to uh, make sure that the stamina system was implemented properly instead of having it so, you know, you could use the hook shot to go everywhere. You had it so you had to use the stamina and do that whole thing there. So, uh, this entire dungeon basically is chasing after that skeleton. So you gotta kinda navigate all throughout places everywhere. It can be kind of a lot. And that's when you know, when you yawn, you gotta take a sip of that iced coffee. <laughs> so by comparison to the last episode, I have the PlayStation State to Play on in the background here. Not that I'm not enthralled with what what's happening with Link's Awakening here. But uh, as you can probably follow along here, it's going to be um, fairly self-explanatory unless I uh, make some notes here. Uh, I try to destroy this thing. I forget how you actually do it. I think it's... No, it's magic. It's definitely magic and I just don't realize it. And the bomb obviously still destroys me even though I used my shield, so whatever. Um, I I'm just having this on in the background in case anything relatively interesting happens, which I've already seen reactions that it nothing happens that's interesting, but hey... That's fine. Uh, maybe they'll reveal an Ape Escape 3. Uh, uh, Ape Escape 4. Ape Escape Remaster. A game that I loved on the PlayStation. That, or PlayStation 2, rather. A Ape Escape 2 and 3 were pretty good. 2 was... Uh, 2 was better than 3, but 3 had better environments. So, that's how I feel about it. But, um... They're basically trying to mimic Nintendo's directs that they have, which is their means of getting information out to you directly. Instead of uh, showing, you know, interesting games, PlayStation, I guess, is choosing to show the new Call of Duty, which is fine. That's totally fine. So, um, yeah, this dungeon, we actually stumbled, I stumbled across uh, one of the four rooms before uh, this actually happened here so uh, one of the rooms I actually never went downstairs I don't think to the right I don't think I did but uh, I stumbled across one of them accidentally which was uh, the fourth and last one uh, you can tell by the skulls head there's like four uh, gems you know in the corners there so I stumbled across four before I actually found you know the other ones so yeah um, you know and that's whatever that's fine so it's fairly... Now it's fairly self-explanatory. These things, I guess, were... Like, okay, so when this game first came out, apparently people couldn't tell what things were. I mean, obviously, I couldn't either. Because it was on the Game Boy. So people were very uh, excited slash perplexed by uh, that being a balloon-like thing. And that area right there... Y you're not supposed to go down there right now. That's actually how you access the final boss. So... Uh, no sense in being down there right now. That's why I just basically blipped right over it. I went down there all the way through and came all the way back. So, yeah. Um, although the graphics on the new Call of Duty do look very good, though. They look very good. Very realistic, uh, like humans. They look like human... Ro robot humans? Yeah, they still look like... It still looks fake. Like, it doesn't look like real. Like, real life. But it looks real enough, you know? I think Link's, Awa Link's Awakening looks pretty realistic there. That's how you botch a joke, ladies and gentlemen. But, oh well. Am I gonna die here? I think I do. Because I see a little edit up here. Maybe I do. Huh. Oops. Well. Um, they don't give you any sort of uh, hearts in here. Actually, maybe I don't. Because if you just slash him once, then he's disabled there. Bam. There you go. And luckily, I still have plenty of bombs. So, hey. Whatever. 
That's fine too. Oh no, he's good. He's done. All right, cool. I can't beat you. I'm out of here. Just prolonging the inevitable, buddy. That's all you're doing. Trying to be all cool. That's not happening. And so is uh, Call of Duty. I I played Call of Duty when I was younger, when I was uh, an adolescent, when I was uh, you know drinking Mountain Dew and Monster Energy drinks all day, uh, and Doritos. And, you know, this game is coming out soon to Luigi's Mansion, so I'm obviously not playing that. Definitely not doing videos on it, even if I wanted to. Or even if I did get it, I wouldn't be doing videos on it. Um, There's a game involving strawberries, apples, and meat sticks from the creators of Katamari Damacy. A game that I've never played, but uh, it, it looks interesting enough. It's, it's, so Katamari Damacy, which is, this is totally unrelated to Zelda, by the way. Uh, hopefully you're not too mad at that. Like, this whole, <laughs> these past couple episodes have been so not about Zelda. But because I, I already played it, you know, you, you can see what I'm doing here, you know? Oh, there's, so there's number three. Um, it, it's a game where basically you play as a little character, and you roll up a ball of junk to get a high score. It's very cool, it's actually on Nintendo Switch. It's probably one of the games I would play, like, next year. You know, because I'm starting to whittle down on games that, like, I've wanted to play but never played. So, uh, this past year has been games I've wanted to cover on video forever but haven't had a chance to while covering new games. Then next year is basically going to be all the experiences that I want uh, or the, you know, the things that I wanted to play but I've never actually played. So, taking a look at all those new games there. So, our old games, rather. And there's our map. So... Yeah, it's a very odd game, Katamari Damacy. You're, it's a, you're just a little character. You built, it's like a ball of junk. It's kind of like uh, rabbits go home, in that sense, because uh, you're basically building a giant pile of junk to the moon. Is the entire point of the game. And the first game that I had ever done a complete let's play for. So, there you go. Uh, it's the first video series I ever completed, way back when. Uh, obviously, that series doesn't exist anymore. But, uh, well, I have it, but it's not on the internet anywhere for you to see. So, that stays in the archives. So, when I'm 50 years old and I'm retired in my, you know, massive floating mansion off the shore of Nahant, uh, you can go and look at all that stuff and uh, look at my legacy of awful videos I've done throughout all my years as being a, a content creator. But there you go. So, uh, this is called what wa wa what 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 I don't know. What time? It's from the people who make Katamari Damacy W A T T A M for uh, Princess uh, captioning this right now. So there you go. Um, just so she knows. Shout out to Princess doing all the captions for my videos. Greatly appreciated. As I take a sip of my iced coffee, trying to keep the energy the absolute highest I possibly can. And it, yeah, it, I am looking off to the side here. I'm trying to see, trying to see if there's anything interesting, you know. But no, not really. I mean, Link's Awakening is interesting enough. Trust me, it is. But, and I totally botched that. But whatever. I'll head back up here. That should be good. There we go. Yeah, I got it. Nice. So, hopefully, once I'm back, because I'm obviously I'm still not away in Canada. Eh. But hopefully, once I'm back. No, definitely once I'm back. I'm gonna take. What am I doing Saturday? I don't think I'm doing anything Saturday. Friday, I'm going to... So, I, I get back from, from Canada. And then, I'm going to an anime convention. Uh, which, that was the case last year in November. It was the same weekend that uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee came out. So, this year, it's in September. For whatever reason. It's in this... It's in a hotel lobby. It's... Like, I, I, I'm i not like, uh, it's just whatever. I'm going, because my friends are going for the whole weekend. I'm obviously not going for the whole weekend, because ain't nobody got time for that. But, I'm going to go, and I'm going to go because, oh, here's a hook shot. I'm going to uh, expose myself to uh, new types of cultures, okay? New types of people, you know? So, we'll see what, uh, what interesting characters appear here. So, uh, the hook shot is very cool. Uh, it allows you to traverse areas way more easily. Uh, obviously, doesn't help with that sense right there. But yeah, you can't uh, hook shot onto rocks. But yeah, so you can also stun enemies this way too. It's really cool. 
you can pull items toward you, like hearts and I think the beetles and stuff. Not like, you know, John and all them, but like the, the, the actual, the floating little things. The gold things, yeah. Those things I think you can pull toward you. Either that or it's a boomerang that the boomerang you definitely can. I, I think with the hook shot you can too. But basically with the hook shot you can also pull yourself across distances that way. So you can like shaking and like go. It's really, really cool. So I can see why uh, they would not want to implement that in the Breath of the Wild because it would basically mean the stamina system is useless. But, uh, you know, once you upgrade your stamina enough anyways, you, you know, you're good regardless. So, and I, I kind of, I don't know if I feel bad, but, oh, and also that accordion looking thing over there, uh, that is what it's used for as well. So, these things are the most annoying things in the game, it seems like. The, uh, the red little slimy things, those approaching you. Um, and now they're showing on the PlayStation thing, just to, just to update you. Because I have said before, like, I've, I've watched, uh, like, Bob Ross videos in the back. <laughs> In the, in the background of uh, doing other videos, because why not? Uh, so, you know, like while playing, I think while playing Fortnite, I did. But yeah, so now uh, they are showing uh, VR games, which I have not booted up my VR system in a year, at least. Uh, I've wanted to play VR games. I wanted to do VR games back in like January, and it pushed me off the screen, really? Okay. Um, I wanted to do that back in January, but I just didn't have time. I don't know what I was doing. I think I was doing Smash Bros, which was totally justified. Doing a ton more Smash Bros videos, definitely. Of which only recently I've actually completed. So, I completed Classic Mode after, what, a year, it seems like. So, no, no, a little less than a year. But yeah. Uh, these guys are uh, actually a pretty cool boss, but I am bad at it, obviously. Uh, use the hook shot to uh, destroy them. You got to destroy one at a time here. And they both have their own individual health. They have different things that they have got going on. Um, if you analyze their patterns, it's definitely easier. But um, if they are charging their eye a bit longer, that means they're going to charge toward you. So if they're like, mm, 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 they're doing that, then they're going to charge toward you. Uh, otherwise, they're going to have one of those beams of light. But obviously, I'm not careful enough. I die. I come right back to it. Keep on going at them there. You just keep uh, rinse and repeat sort of a deal here. I do show uh, a little bit of the uh, boss battle here. So, uh, and the hook shot allows you to get them from a, a pretty long distance as well. Uh, if anything, I would say aim for uh, the one that is behind. That way, it's not two different projectiles launching at you that way and diminishing your hearts. Um, but you definitely want to uh, get to... You know, one of them, focus on one of them before the other, you know? Because it's easier to defeat both of them once you have already one gone. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, you can see they were kind of like shaking more violently right there. Yeah, that's what they were doing. And then, yep, there you go. Once you defeat one of them, you're good. They're, uh, they're showing this game called Medieval on, uh, on the PlayStation thing, which is a remake of a game that I had never played on PlayStation. Apparently a very good game. Uh, it's like a spooky game, so maybe I'll play it for October. Uh, let me know also by any means of the internet. A game that I've wanted to play for a very long time, but I don't know if it's still popular enough that people would still want me to play it. Uh, a little game called Undertale. Uh, it's come out a couple of years ago. Have never actually played it. I've only seen a few videos on it. Looks very funny, but I want to know if you want me to play Undertale. I would play it for uh, the October season. I plan on doing uh, Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, and probably Undertale. For spooky games so not the undertale oh, undertale is spooky so that'll fit the aesthetic back here so you know we'll see how that ends up happening here you can barely probably even notice it on camera here but my hair is still ever so slightly dyed uh, green slash blue slash blonde got to get that all cut up there so doing that as well as getting my grandfather his cellular device okay so now, uh, we need to find our way back. To, well, I don't even have the boss key, right? No, I do not. So, uh, I don't know where that is. Uh, obviously, I'm going to show it here. But, yeah. Uh, and they're not showing anything interesting on the PlayStation thing. But if I can watch Bob Ross in the background, okay? I can watch this PlayStation thing and tell you about the video game news that is absolutely necessary for a family-friendly audience, okay? So, uh, the only thing that's been shown so far is that 
Katamari Damacy game. Uh, there's this, uh, just games I don't care. Like, yeah, I'm very, uh, happy that a lot of the, a lot of the games that are, like, super, uh, you know, not adult oriented, but a lot of the rated M games, like, uh, there's this game called, uh, like, okay, so, like, Red Dead Redemption 2 I'm interested in, but this game by the, the guy who made Metal Gear Solid, you know, I'm not very interested in that, so... A lot of the games that are on PlayStation right now exclusively that are for older crowds, I don't really care about, thankfully, so... Okay, cool, now I can actually go back to where I was before and uh, do the boss key there. Um, but I just don't care. Like, I haven't used my PlayStation to record videos since... I don't even know. What was the last game? Not Spider-Man, it was something else. Was it Crash or Spyro? It was Spyro. Like, a year ago. Like, that's crazy. I haven't used my... I use my PlayStation for, you know, watching videos. That's what it seems like. Because the Switch doesn't have it. So, that's what I use the PlayStation for. It's like, alright, whatever. And a lot of the games that are coming out for PlayStation, I don't care about. And, you know, Spider-Man sequel, God of War, would be coming out three years from now, four years from now. So, uh, like, I'm not all on board for uh, PlayStation Next Generation. Microsoft with the Xbox... Some good stuff over there. You pay for Xbox Game Pass. You get all the games on there for like 10 bucks a month and whatever. It's crazy, dude. Absolutely crazy. It's good stuff. So this gives you kind of perspective on where I'm at in the uh, in the dungeon here. And uh, how to get back. You know, I, I kind of get lost a couple of times too. Which is understandable, you know. There's a lot going on. So I got a, um, a standard iced coffee flavor here. Nothing too crazy. It's just uh, uh, almond milk and three sugars because I I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna bump it down to two. I didn't get any flavor in it just because, but uh, yeah, I usually get three. Just add a little bit of excitement into my life, you know. Uh, eventually, I'll probably take the coffee, just totally plain black, or with at least almond milk in it because almond milk is like good for you. It's better than regular milk, and I sound super fancy and privileged when I say that. So, hey, anything to be a little bit healthier, as I also got two donuts with this. So, hey, you know, nobody's perfect, okay? <laughs> I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. He, she, we, Wumbo, not perfect, you know? I don't know why I decided to use that there. Well, I mistake a, a lot of the time using the wrong item. But I really wish that, because, like, the A button is never actually used in the game. You use X, Y for the items, and then B for the sword. But other than that, you don't use A for anything, and you never de-equip the feather, so why not actually make the, the feather an item? Or rather, just A, just so you can jump, you know? So, I don't know. Uh, this guy here, I forget what boss this is. Oh, it's a, uh, it's a snake. It's a snake. Yeah, cool. Now, he's pretty interesting. He can be a little difficult. Uh, I don't think I die, which is good. But, uh, yeah, you're basically fighting two fights here. You're avoiding the, um, what looks like a ball and chain here. Oh, a slime eel. Pretty cool. Uh, you're avoiding the ball and chain here and, uh, trying to nab that thing down there. So, uh, yeah, and it, it doesn't just go in a perfect circle here. Uh, he changes up his speed at which he, uh, you know, the ball and chain goes around here. You can keep on destroying them all the way that way. So you basically need to have the hook shot to, like, and, like, pull them out that way. Um, right here, I did not learn this. You cannot inflict any damage to him. Uh, he will just explode. So, there's no way for you to stop him. There's no way to do any of that. Uh, you basically just have to stick with it. Uh, avoid. Just avoid him. You don't need to do anything else. But you need to grab him with the hook shot while his mouth is open there. Uh, that part is fairly easy. Uh, after a couple of times of doing that, you're pretty much good. But yeah, it, it, this is a bit more of a elaborate boss battle compared to other ones that we've done in the past couple of dungeons here so especially because like you see it's speeding up at different times and whatnot that that can be a bit more than uh you know you're in in for here but yeah don't even bother with him there uh because yeah he'll just explode uh don't even use a shield to block it just run away you know he doesn't move that f so fast that uh he doesn't you know, like you, you need to avoid him to that extent so you can see him there, 
uh, his eyes were actually inverted. I didn't realize that until right now. But you saw, like, the outer part, part of his eye was black and the pupil was white. It needs to be the opposite in order to grab him. So I think if you grab him when it's the other way, when it's that way, you're accidentally unleashing the bomb eel. So, yeah, you don't want to do that. I, I do that clearly here a couple of times. But uh, I didn't realize that. So uh, live and learn, ladies and gentlemen. But, uh, yeah, now this is the last one. This should be good here. And there you go. It was just one more shot, and that was it. So, cool. The eel, the big slimy eel, is defeated. And we net ourselves another instrument to awaken the wind fish, which is always good. And there's another heart container for us. And that was the entire state of play as well. Uh, yeah, they didn't show anything interesting. It was just The Last of Us 2, and I don't care about that. So, whatever. Uh, not bad. Actually, not great at all. There's a xylophone for you as I'm doing jumps all around it, because why not? Uh, cool. The xylophone of the... Oh, it's a maram marimba. Not a xylophone. Marimba. I'm thinking, like, the toy xylophone you play with, like... You think you're all from a tropical island because you're using the xylophone all fancily. But anyways. Block your eyes, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting bright in your rooms. Oh, boy. There you go. And where are we going next? Shrine. Wow, go figure. That's specific. That is very specific. Okay, the island's secret in the shrine. That's not vague at all. So I'm going to get out of here for this episode at least. I'm going to commentate a little bit more because why not? I want to thank you guys and girls for listening, watching, tuning in, and meowing it out with me as always. My name has been Brian Saviano, a.k.a. Bricks O'Brien. I'll see you again next time for more Link's Awakening shenanigans in the next episode. But until then, have a, a fantastic day. And I'm going to keep drinking this, and you're going to keep watching. Hopefully. Peace out. Bye.